Hey, Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday Sit Rep. We have a ton to get to this week. We got a bunch of new stuff, we got a bunch of information coming at your way, so make sure to stay tuned for that uh, because we're going to go over it a little bit more after we dive into the models. But first things first, we are going to we have a Mad Minute sale going on right now all the way through the end of Sunday, and that does stack with clearance items both in stores and online. So lots of good stuff, cheaper than it's ever been before now on BrickMania.com and in our retail stores. And we also have some new stuff that's going to be eligible for that sale as well. So let's dive on in, take a closer look. All right, starting things off with this week's featured pre-order, we have the Sikorsky SH3 Sea King designed by George Hicks, uh, Brennan, our project manager here. This one's specifically used in the Apollo 11 uh, astronaut recovery. Uh, so Brennan, tell me a little bit more about this build. Um, well, if you've seen the Sea King, you've seen this, but but in gray or jolly green. It's this, but mm -hmm. in green to a certain degree. But there's a lot of there's a lot more printing that's going on this than I think that went on either of those um, that you're going to see. So it's a lot of the same things. You're going to have your your folding doors here, if I can get that open, which my fingernails are saying, no, you can't. Um, but you've got a fold out door here and you've got on the other side, for example, gonna have the same pull off door that acts like a sliding door. If you can get it off, you just kind of tuck it away. It's as sure. if it slides into the craft. Lots of interior space like the last one. Oh, tons of interior space. Um, it's got this, for the interior printing, for example, you've got a very similar sonar station and, and uh, cockpit uh, like dashboard kind of thing going on mm -hmm. it's the same same printing for that uh, on the outside we're gonna get you know danger intakes here for example big old stars and bars on the side big old 66 which I believe it's the, the exact same helicopter that also picked up uh, the Apollo 8 and the Apollo 10 Very capsules cool. when those came back uh, which we also have Slam, slam saw that was a detail that gets put up here they actually have the capsules on oh it. sure yeah it's like these are the missions i've successful been successful recoveries so, yeah that's awesome which is super cool so you're going to get a lot of that um i guess a big 66 some more minute details um in the you know across the back tiles here how um, many minifigs are we working with we're working with six minifigs so nice. you've got three three crewmen for the helicopter you've got two to work in your cockpit and one to work the sonar station i take off the roof but mm -hmm we'd be here forever. We'll dive into that for the designer exactly. studio. Yeah. Um, still got the, the folding tail, I believe that's a that's a carryover. Mm -hmm. I was I would I didn't work on the old one, so I've only seen some of the stuff. But you still got the folding tail for carrier stowage and whatnot. Um, rotor, which still spins. Um, what else for printing? I mean, I've, I've looked at this thing as far as when it's been traced out. It feels like it's just been printed all along the side here. <laughs> yeah, I know feels we cleared like, like 60 elements or exactly, something. Exactly, 60 That's something crazy. elements. It's pretty crazy. You'll have your little USS Hornet, danger clear of rotors, the rotors themselves. Back rotors are printed, top ones are brick built, so no need for that. Um, you'll have a winch. I forgot to point out the winch on the other side, which I think is still... Uh, uh, carry over from the old Sea mm -hmm. King. Yeah, nicely integrated, just like mm -hmm. beforehand, George. Yep, and uh, yeah, all together. I mean, it's it's fairly light for how big it is. Like mm -hmm. it's it's mostly hollow, and so it's it's it does feel really nice to just kind of swoosh around a little bit. I'd be gentle with it, but it's it's very nice to kind of treat like a helicopter. Yeah, honestly. there you go. So there you very, have it. Very fun. The SH. Three Sea King now available on pre-order on BrickMedia.com. Brennan, thanks for checking in. All right, moving on to our next round of pre-orders. We have the new Sea Ram designed by Mary Wilson. So she's here to talk a little bit more about this build. Yeah. So jumping right into it, uh, it is very similar to the Sea Wiz from way back when. Mm -hmm. I believe we're still selling that one. Um, this is kind of like they had like a standalone missile launcher and then they like had the phalanx and then they like combined the two um so it's actually like the same exact like radar system up here it's like the same little r2d2 guy mm -hmm. um uh that's like the same exact scale so that is the very iconic look to it yeah, isn't right? it yeah <laughs> r2d2 is a good way to put it dan dan gave me the option of doing the the other one that's like just the missile launcher and mm -hmm. i was like i don't know <laughs> this one's cuter. Um, so I Perfect. went with this one. Uh, it's going to have some of the returning parts. We've got like all of those details on the side here. It's like the ladder and then mm -hmm. there's like a little warning sign and stuff. Like Slam got all those good details in there. Um, this part uh, can, so this spins and this 
Uh, mm -hmm. Rotates like up and down. And then there's also, when you open this, again, you can take this part off. So if you've got larger hands than mine. Thank you. And, <laughs> and then you can rotate this axle piece. And this is a bit improved from last time. Last time it worked just fine, but if you like yanked it out, like it, you would have to like take it apart to put mm -hmm. it back together. But now you can't yank it out. So just making it a little bit more foolproof. Um, so we've really got that. foolproof. I mean, yanking <laughs> out. <laughs> Thanks for right. thinking ahead. <laughs> I was because after this, the first one came out. I was like, how could I have done that? Because it wasn't the right length to just use an axle with a stopper on it. Right. So it was like things are. It wasn't like the simplest route. And also, this is a little bit heftier on the sides because again, back like two years ago when I made it, we were kind of building for like, let's do it as like inexpensive as possible. Mm -hmm. And now we've kind of switched to like, let's make it sturdy. Like, let's just use those parts. We know that our customer is like that. Yeah, know? absolutely. So, so this one is like a little bit stronger on the sides here. I use um, some different pieces to hold that together. Uh, other than that, we're getting some printing on the side here. There's just like this, I, I don't know if this is technically like a fleur, but um, like these like extra like radar sensors, sensors yeah. and things. Um, so there's like a little bit more detail there. And then for the actual missile, um, like the caps that are here, so it's like the front and the back, mm -hmm. um, that is going to be a sticker because it's over like So many elements, thing. yeah. I was wondering that. Yeah, right. <laughs> we were talking about it, but it's like, oh, it's same week as some other stuff. Like, yeah. like let's make it a sticker, it's gonna look clean. Um, and uh, I was going to say one more thing about it. Oh, uh, if you haven't seen a video of this firing, like, right. you should see it. It's also just kind of funny because like the caps like pop off and then the missile launches. <laughs> it's like that, that like half a second where it's just like, what? Did and it work? And it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's very cool. Very wild in real life. Um, and I'm very happy with this like little mini model. So cute. Yes, the desk defense system collection continues with the C-RAM air defense missile system designed by Mary Wilson. Thank you very much for checking in. Of course. All right, moving on to one of our standalone minifigures. We have the SAS Pebble Island Raider uh, designed by Landon. So he's here to talk a little bit more about this figure that does include this awesome perfect mm -hmm. caliber brick arms. Yes, um, I'm happy that we got that included in there. So yeah, let's just start with that brick arms. So this is an M16A2 and this is the grenade launcher variant. Um, I like the um, the barrel uh, shroud that uh, the the that it's kind of that boxy look uh, with the vent holes mm -hmm. drilled into it or punched into it. Um, Slam did a wonderful job on the artwork on that gun. Um, some spray paint uh, canister. There's some spray paint lines, and here's like my favorite feature on the other side. We actually have some texture printing on that. Um, so you might be wondering, hey, this is this is a, an American gun. Um, why are they? Why are the British using it? Or why are the British using it? So, um, from what I could gather, um, since it was a smaller round than the typical, um, um, what is it, NATO battle rifle, um, the FAL, mm -hmm. it's a smaller round which the special forces like because it lets them carry more ammunition for the same weight. Makes a ton of sense. What I'm hearing. Um, so I think this is what is this five five six something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, that's why the special forces opted for this weapon. So I like the little med kit, um, the field dressing uh, taped to the side of that buttstock there. That's an excellent um, detail that uh, Slam got on there. Some really cool photographs from history as well that we're pulling that from. Uh, SAS also has some specific gear, uh, that mesh vest. I think you'll only see that with British SAS from the era, and it's a pretty rare piece of equipment. It's kind uh, of the fishing vest look. <laughs> it, it is. Um, it's interesting seeing these kind of transitional pieces that, you know, it's, it's a combination of, it's a, it's, a, it's a vest and the ammo pouches, whereas um, more, and like a, there's a backpack on this thing too. Um, you know, these, these special forces of this era were, were still figuring out the common loadouts. Now we have these integrated like plate carriers with ammo pouches onto it. This was kind of, you know, obviously it doesn't have armor in it, but, um, they're still kind of experimenting with with that idea of what's a, what's a fast load, what's a that's what's a good special forces loadout. Mm -hmm. um, lots of ammunition storage. We have the standard pattern fifty eight webbing underneath mm -hmm. of that, so that would be common uh, for the British or, or just the standard like the Yompers. You know, those guys would also have that equipment. Yep. Uh, and then again, given the the relatively short time period of this conflict, the the overall gear didn't you know change much from beginning to end. Right. I don't think it changed at all from beginning mm -hmm. to end. You know, they went in with what they had. 
Hence continuing that camo too. Right, right. So that's that's the DPM British camo. Um, really iconic, uh, used across. It, it seemed like all the different branches were, were using it. Um, and I, th I think it is, you know, it was, and I think still is a pretty good camouflage pattern. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, very iconic. Uh, I like the, uh, from what I could tell, civilian purchase, like gaiters on the legs. I, they might have an official one as well, um, but I opted for a little bit more of a... Different tone of green, it yeah, looks like there too. Yeah, it's kind of a brighter, almost, um, it's, um, you'd see it in like mountaineering. So that goes mm -hmm. with those boots as well. Those are also civilian purchase boots. So they're just like heavy duty mountaineering hiking boots. Um, which I'd imagine that if they had those boots, they probably had the civilian gaiters to go with them. So that's kind of the inspiration for that. Um, what else do we have? Obviously some epic face artwork. Yes, some, some epic face artwork. Um, we got the uh, intense British commando mustache going on there with some face painting. And then you got, you got that beanie cap to kind of top it all off. Uh, overall, pretty smart looking minifigure here. And an excellent addition to the rundown, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm super pumped that we got the uh, brick arms included with the minifigure. So you don't have to, if one sells out, you get, you're stuck with one or the other. You get It is kind of a game people yeah, got to play nice. at times. No, you're not wrong. So well, there nice. you have it. The SAS Pebble Island Raider designed by Landon, now available on BrickMania.com. Thanks for checking in. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next of our standalone minifigures. We have Bugsy Siegel, designed by Drew, kind of continuing our, our Gangsters and G-Men series that we've started up here. I love the slot machine that comes with this. Really cool addition. Tell me a little bit more about the history behind this creation. All right, yeah, so the Bugsy Siegel minifig. Um, I was super pumped to be able to do this. Um, I am a bit of a history geek, and um, I, I, I should admit that I don't really get down on the military stuff quite as much as other people here at Brickmania. But um, when we can kind of go off into other areas, I'm totally down to, to get into that. So this is Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, famous American gangster, and he comes with a slot machine. Mm -hmm. And you were kind of joking about how uh, nobody ever would have called him Bugsy to his face unless they wanted to be taking a dirt nap. So that's yeah. kind of a funny he, way to put it. He had a, uh, a saying that friends call me Ben, strangers call me Mr. Siegel. And people I don't like call me Bugs. There you go. It was a nickname that uh, apparently meant he was crazy as a bed bug, <laughs> and he hated it. So, but yeah. So the I was tasked with designing Bugsy Siegel and the slot machine that came with him. The slot machine I decided to kind of go with more of a like a simple Lego aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to get like too into the the details on there. Although you know, with the stuff that our UV print team is capable of doing these days. Uh, it really could have, I could have gotten into the weeds on that one. Instead, I just decided to do kind of like a play on the old 1940s Flamingo Casino yeah. um, slot machine that is coming up lemons, mm -hmm. as you can see on there, because you don't go to the casino to win. <laughs> you go to the casino to lose. Dylan and I may have spent a little bit of time. No kidding. Casino we have a little experience on, there. <laughs> on our road trip out west and... Let's just say I didn't do so good, which is what <laughs> Bugsy the, uh, would have been happy to have you in his casino. Yeah. Yep, that's that's how he made his fortune or was starting to make his fortune. So it's a it's a really simple brick built slot machine that Mary actually came up with the design for the slot machine itself. And mm -hmm. then I came up with the artwork and great teamwork on that one. It's a fun little little thing to have. I don't know if another Lego slot machine exists. It, I actually, I was gonna say, it's nice that you chose kind of the Lego aesthetic for this though, because if you wanted to put it in your Lego city, it'd kind of look at home. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it doesn't stand out at all from, right, right. from some of the other looks. And then uh, on to the, the man himself, Bugsy Siegel. There are a few uh, really famous pictures of him uh, from back in the heyday. And he was kind of known for dressing, let's just say when he, by the time he went out west to California and Las Vegas, mm -hmm. he was known for dressing kind of flamboyantly okay. and kind of trying to look the movie star role. So instead of the, what you might expect is like the classic pinstripe suit from a gangster from, from that era, I've got him adorned in his uh, houndstooth jacket yeah. and uh, wool dress pants and then these real slick leather dress shoes. You want to flip those to the side real quick so I can look at the, yeah, that white on the side is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's so cool. Just just looking at images of dress shoes from that era, I was like, now I think I need to buy some 1940s era <laughs> dress shoes. Yeah, no kidding. They were incredible the way, like the, the craftsmanship that went into the, the leather shoes back then. But um, 
So yeah, one of the things that uh, I was a little concerned about when designing this minifigure was how to represent the houndstooth pattern. Sure. Um, just the way the way we UV print things, um, the way colors will come out, things look differently when you're zoomed way in as opposed to when you step back. You know, if you look at a houndstooth coat from like 20 feet away, it doesn't look like a houndstooth coat when you've got it like right up in next front to of your eyes. face. So, yeah, that's a good point. So I was trying to find this like happy in between where it would sort of look like a houndstooth pattern um, when you're holding this minifig. And Slam did a test print for me on uh, our UV printer in the office, and like right out of the gate, the first test print, I was like, "Yep, that's that's, that's what the we're pattern looking for. I want to do." So it worked out great, and then the the UV print team did a great job of of conveying that. Um, and making the colors and everything work as I wanted. Yeah, the transition for that for that coat onto the torso, and then that yep. tie. My gosh, that tie is awesome. Yeah, so he that you know that's from an actual photo of him mm -hmm. where he's got this playing card tie. And I let's say I took a, some liberties a little bit with the the cards that are on that tie for for a certain reason, but but yeah, he he does have some photos of him wearing this playing card tie when he was really trying to to lean into that whole Las Vegas tycoon kind of thing that he was going for at the end of his life. Um, and then the the last of it too is the the wool dress pants, these blue wool dress pants that, yeah, have like another, like a really soft feel to it that I was trying mm -hmm. to uh, represent and, and the, what the print team here was able to print, just it looked phenomenal. Yeah. Like, again, right out, like exactly what I was looking for, so. Without those, without those UV print people, uh, this wouldn't have turned out nearly as well as I would have liked. But yeah, I, I, I'm really happy with it. So happy with it, I was willing to come on camera for the first time <laughs> yeah. and talk about talk about this fig. So, oh, that's phenomenal. It's cool to hear everything that goes into the process, especially when you loop in something like a mini build to come with it. And then obviously, you know, gangsters kind of a different direction for Brickmania. So there's definitely going to be some new artistic challenges there. But there you have it, the Bugsy Siegel minifigure available right now on Brickmania.com. Drew, thanks for checking in. Thank you. All right, so like I was saying in the intro, we do have some new information coming around from Brickmania.com. One is that we're finally on TikTok. Woohoo, yay, we, we're, we're hip, we're with it. Um, the other thing is that we're breaking out our YouTube channel uh, to bring back some of the stuff that people have been missing. So first things first, we will still be keeping around the original Brickmania channel that you're watching on right now. We will still have regular sit reps and regular content here, but we're also going to do a couple of more things. So one, we're going to start uh, the Brickmania TV Reels channel. That is going to be exclusively the home of all of our animation. So we're going to begin by uploading all of the past animations that we've done and then projects in the future are all going to live on that channel. In addition, we've heard a lot of people say that they want the designer studio videos to come back. We know, trust me, it was, my, it was literally my favorite part of my job when I was doing it. Um, and so now we are going to bring that back, but the way we're doing so is with its own official channel. Um, those won't necessarily be like they were before where they're coinciding with the actual releases. They're just going to be when we can get to them and when we have the assets we need to do a comprehensive overview of these sets, we will do so. We'll take our time to edit them up all nice and then we'll get them uploaded on that channel as well. So both for the animations channel and for the designer studio channel, they're going to be Kind of evergreen content that you can tune in and watch whenever you feel like but if you're looking for consistent weekly updates the things that are happening here you know on a weekly basis from Brickmania, then you want to stay tuned into the news channel so three channels soon to be launched starting this weekend uh, the uh, Brickmania tv reels channel is actually already up and running and obviously so is this one so we hope to have the designer studios returning sometime over this weekend but that's the update when it comes to youtube and social media expansion here at Brickmania. very excited uh, to continue to produce more content we'll see where it goes from here That'll do it for a Friday sit rep. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me a little bit more about the history behind this creation. Uh. <laughs> it's Drew's first time on Brickmania TV, everyone. Uh, am I live? You're live. How am I doing? You're doing great. <laughs>